back. Um, I want to combine a lot of things and looking at my notes and thinking, oh, I'm running out of time and I'm not sure what I can cover in this last session. It's been great doing these with you guys. I think uh, hopefully, hopefully it's helped you. And if you could drop me a little note and uh, the comments to, to let me know, just give me some feedback because I don't know, I'm just rambling here. <laughs> Found this nice wall to make these videos. And um, yeah, isn't that very, very fascinating. <laughs> But this one, I'm just going to throw the kitchen sink at you. I really am. And I, I'm hopefully I'm not going to scare you. Just I'm looking at my notes and thinking, I need to wrap up. But I also need to tell you so much. <laughs> so um, writing without fear. That's the topic of this one. And I don't know if you picked up on some of my ramblings. That, uh, that, that's, that's something that I've had to overcome. And it's only by the grace of God. It's only by God working me through this process of not being fearful, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of judgment. It'll prevent you from writing, prevent you from starting anything, prevent you from finishing once you, if you have started. Um, every writer struggles through fear. Every writer. In fact, one of my... Um, mentors, even though he didn't know he's one of my mentors, James Scott Bell. Um, just, you know, I'm always talking about all of the things that I've sat in three of his workshops at the Blue Ridge, uh, Blue Ridge Mountains Christian Writers Conference. And ever since then, it's like, you got me. You got me. You see me right through. <laughs> and and uh, I follow him online on his blog and, and his videos on YouTube. Kind of funny. I love his writing. And he's such an inspiration. And he, I remember one blog post, he talked about fear. And using that as a trigger. Not as um, an indication that you should stop. But a trigger to help you push. Help you push past and, and put more energy and put more structure around you writing. And structure, I mean, you've got support, kind of like a scaffolding. You've got the support you need. And I, I did something years ago based on some of his workshops. Is I, I started a file folder. I put all the good things in it that people have ever seen about me or said about me, about my writing, just about me, period, in general cards that people are taking the time to written, write a note. I put that in there. That was my don't, I call it my don't jump. Don't jump off the vision. Don't jump off the gift. You know, don't, don't leave that behind because somebody saw something. So, um, tip for you to do, try that. Embrace your self-doubt. Not like, you know, to coddle it, but to say, you know, I have doubt. And, but I'm going to push through and I'm going to Allow God's Spirit to lead me and heal me through this. Um, and still keep creating. Keep pushing forward on that manuscript. Don't let it make you stop writing. Um, it might be f good to write about your fears and doubts in a journal. So this is something that not, it's not even for publication. It's not even for anybody else to know. But maybe it's good that you just write it for you. It might be good to confess some things to a loved one. If confess some of the fears and the deep things that you know, are keeping you back to a counselor or something. Um, but I have found, of course, I've done some counseling, but I, I think in combination, in tandem, the two have really helped me. If, um, let's see, push past the fears of self-doubts, give yourself permission to write and sometimes write badly. Shut down those voices in your head that are telling you to do otherwise. They're telling you to stop. They're telling you that you are stupid. They're telling you are, you are weak and worthless and you'll never create anything worth reading. Shut those down. It's not of God anyway. The best way to do that is just to keep writing, to push yourself. Uh, the more you write, the stronger your writing muscle will get, the stronger your writing voice will get, more defined um, it will get. It will be easier to keep going. 
And if it, it you feeling like it's very oppressive, then yeah, I'd say get some professional help. I'm not a counselor, but I know I, I you know you you sense when it is too much, and I've been there too. So um, keep pushing and overcome your personal inertia. That's what I call it when you kind of get in a slump, and we've all been there. Keep your health in mind. You're trying to do a lot, maybe for a lot of people. Maybe this isn't a season for writing. But if you can see the space to put down at least a 1,000 words a day, 500 in the morning, 500 in the, in the evening, or during your lunch break, if you can write that many a day, you have the ability to write a full novel in 80 days. So maybe 80,000 word manuscript in 80 days. Will it be the, the best? Maybe not, but you've put it down. You've got a first draft. So I, it, it could be rough. It's just called a rough draft for a reason. But don't, don't hijack that. You know, it, it, could, it could take you more than 80 days. Don't start comparing yourself to others. It's, it's, it's going to slow you down. It's going to kill your joy. It's going to kill your project. Um, just keep writing. Find ways to remove the obstacles and write, write, write. That first draft, like I said, is going to be rough. Don't um, don't publish the first draft. No, you don't want to publish that. Let it sit. A, you may have heard this from other people. Let it sit for a bit, and maybe a week, maybe a month. Come back to it. Do a read aloud and print it out. Like I've got my notes here. Print it out and read it aloud out loud and try and do it as as one fell swoop or at least maybe two or three chunks writing on the uh, paper any notes and, and errors and, and go from there then jump right back into revising it and might have to throw some stuff out and rewrite but that's part of the process um, next you're looking at, oh, actually, before you do any rewriting, do a backup. Backup copy on a thumb drive or Google uh, Drive or, or Dropbox or something, and then go into the revising. Um, I would also suggest checking your grammar. You can do that with lots of apps. One that is really popular, popular is Grammarly.com. And uh, you can also, speaking of read aloud, you can use Adobe Reader's function or Microsoft Word has a function, I believe, too, that you can read aloud so that you don't have to read it yourself because you could get, uh, your voice can get a little tired. So I think that covers pretty much all that I had. Like I said, I was throwing the kitchen sink at you. Um, I do want to just mention a few different things. Sorry for getting too close to the camera. Looks over there. Um, as you are growing as a fiction writer, you should be seeking out different resources. And this is one that one of my favorites by Monica Wood. And I found it through the, I don't know if that's focused, the Pocket Muse. I found it through the Writer's Digest book club. And they don't have the book club anymore, but you you, this one's out of print, but I think you can get her follow-up book. Lots of good resources in here. And it's it's kind of funny little format. Hey, excuse me. <coughs> Don't pick on me. I know somebody's going to pick on me for my sneeze. <laughs> but, um, whoops. The Writer Muse or any kind of writer prompt book. Get one of those. Definitely. Here's another Writer's Digest book. Um, this one is uh, Gloria Kempton. I thought I had the James Scott Bell book. Uh, this one is strictly on dialogue. And believe it or not, you can have this many pages on writing dialogue. I ate that one up. And my dialogue got lots better. That was one of the things that people were telling me, you know, um, early on. Your dialogue stinks. Eh, fix it. Uh, style matters. Grammar and style Get a, whether it's this ancient thing, it's about dust. 
Uh, but it's well used. I got it at a li an old library sale, so it's still got the library sticker on it. But strunk and white elements of style. Last but not least, a writer's market guide. Big honking book. Uh, this is old, but you can get them online as a subscription service. It's basically all the markets that you can ever hope to find whether it's for fiction, nonfiction, technical journals, magazines, puzzles, games, you name it. Anything that you want to create for, get thyself a market guide. I think that's it. Like I said, I was going to throw the kitchen sink at you. Can't think of anything else. I don't have any other books. <laughs> anyway, put your comments in the, uh, and uh, questions out there and... That's all for now. And actually, if you want me to make any other videos, let me know. Just give me some ideas. Is thing, is something maybe I've, is there something that you want me to answer or cover? And uh, I can do that. Thanks a lot. Love y'all. Bye.